my top two law firms in January, we signed up 700 clients. In 30 days, we sent us 700 clients. So for lawyers, here's my list of the top client sources slash traffic sources. And the way that I think of them is the most likely to work out and easiest going down and kind of like a checklist. We want to make sure that we do we have this set up. If you don't, let's try to do set this up. And if you have the second one set up, great. Then I want to do the third one. But we, we don't want to do the third one until we get the first and second one, basically. So the first one is Google LSA. I think most of us should be aware of what this is just in case you don't it's basically google's way of getting calls for law firms and it's the easiest because it doesn't require a landing page or a funnel basically all you do is create an account you select basically what practice types that you like to get calls for and you basically give it a budget and you get calls based on the market that you're in okay what i did with people that are media buyers people that basically do marketing marketing agencies and contractors that do marketing and i shared this before i'm in a very interesting situation where I could refer them clients and I could um, send them clients, but in order for them really to send them clients, I always ask for data. And I actually did it again this morning and I have new updated data from Empirical 360. And I told them quickly, hey, I'm about to do a mastermind session on traffic services. Quickly tell them, tell me what's working right now. So here's what they sh shared with me. Just copy and pasted it. So they shared again, family law, free consults preferred, state planning that uh, I know comes with a lot of probate leads, sometimes too much, too many free leads, but that's another story. DUI, immigration, again, free consults, personal injury, which requires a larger budget, which also depends on the city that you're doing it in, and business litigation. And again, if you're part of this list, this document that I shared with you, go through it, it has all the notes, it has some old notes about cost, expected cost per leads, the ranking factors, all that stuff. Uh, the part that's crucial for us, for anybody that's thinking about doing Google LSA is either do it yourself or hire an agency to do it. There's pros and cons to both. My take is if you like less than a $5,000 budget, I would do it myself. It's pretty straightforward. But if we go beyond that, then yes, it could be uh, worth somebody to go and dispute calls for you and set up tracking and do all this other stuff. Any questions about Google LSA, please share with me. You didn't have a question, Sam, but I just want to yeah. point out, and maybe exactly. this is me because I'm in my market is Ohio. I've had good results with LSA, not only because of what they provide, but it ends up People find me on Google, then they go to my website and they contact me through the website. So I really count all of that as LSA traffic because it's all through Google. The interesting thing is I've I've said, let's spend more money. You know, I run my practice virtually, so I cover the entire state of Ohio, but we don't control the volume of searches that are there. Now, I don't do probate, so I will put that as a little caveat. Um, because I, I run my practice virtually, I'm not running around to courts all over the place and yeah, I could, I guess I could establish relationships. My point is I'm spending as much as the searches that are available, right. For, you know, estate planning wills and trusts. So it's, uh, I've said, Oh, let, let's spend more money. Let's spend more money. But the people, you know, we can't control how many people put the search in, but I will still try to do something to add on to the market somehow. Add, add on estate, as you said, that on probates, let's try to monetize that through referrals. You know, I don't yeah, so I, that's the one thing I've been thinking is, but it's not going to be through me. It's either finding like of counsel who can do the probate and figure out what counties and then, you know, sort of refer it out that way. That sounds like a 20K a month opportunity for you just sitting there for you. I'll give it a shot. You got it. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> um, you have to. You always, we're always looking to level up. Like as soon as we get stay stagnant, again, the market could get more competitive, saturated. We, we don't know how long it's going to take. So we always want to be one step ahead. You, you have to, Jeff, out of just have that kind of mentality. So got that one out of the way. Second one, Google ads. Same, more or less same story, same kind of nuances. Uh, very likely if it works for Google LSA, usually it will also work with Google ads, any of those practice types. And for the most part, Google ads will be profitable for 95% of practice types. It's all comes down to the conversion. It's all about your intaker you know, you're the person who's taking on the call. Do you have follow-ups, a follow-through? Do you have a good offer? All that stuff. So if you're not Google doing Google ads, you need to try it out. And for that, you cannot do it yourself. So let's just talk about some traps. One, you cannot do Google ads yourself. So if you are or you're considering it, forget about it. That's one. Two, um, for the most part, it matters who does it. I would not hire somebody from Fiverr or these places. I'd rather have somebody who only does it for legal who already has experience. Um, ideally, somebody who already does it for that specific practice type right now, not before. There's a lot of these uh, people that I meet that I've done Google ads 10 years ago that I see on stuff and now they're trying to do Google ads. No, it's a completely different market. So yeah, and it just comes down to Google ads, just comes down to just somebody who knows what they're doing, plus a really good landing page, plus a good 
integer and a good system for taking on the calls, Google ads is very likely to be very, very profitable. Paul asked a good question. What's the difference in the Google ads and Google LSA? Both are my Google LSA isn't showing. Let's see. There we go. So this is Google LSA and this is Google ads. Google LSA trumps Google ads. So that's one. And then two is Google LSA. It's just direct call, usually call. So there's less friction. But the other side is Google LSA, you're paying per call. Google ads, you're paying per click. And the click doesn't necessarily amount to a, a call. So let's just say you have to get 10 clicks, 10 visitors to your landing page. Hopefully you have a decent conversion, a landing page conversion rate on your landing page. One out of 10 or two out of 10 of those people will turn into a call or a lead. And each market has their own kind of, depending on, you know, your market or your competitors and, you know, uh, your reviews and how many people are bidding on Google ads versus Google thing. It's, it's different. And ideally, ideally what I would do is I would put, I would take a budget again, I would when it comes to, we could talk about marketing spend a little bit later. I would try to spend one client worth on a Google LSA, one client worth on Google ads, run that for two months, see which one brings me more calls, each one with their own dedicated phone number. And then after two months, get clarity. Hey, I got 36 calls on Google uh, LSA, 16 calls on Google ads. I ended up not just track the calls, but also track how many clients I got from each source. And then at that point, make a decision to take the entire ad spend and put it into that one source. Or if both are profitable, then double the one that's the, the best one and, and then even put possibly even double both of them. You're gonna double both of them as long as that they're profitable. So that's kind of the difference, the way that I kind of consider it. All right, third one on the list is Facebook ads. So Facebook ads, Paul, right now doing PI in New York, 6K a month, very good. Paul, is it still very, very profitable for you, Paul? Um, it, it has been. I mean, I'm at a almost five to one um, ROI for whatever reason. And, and I'm working with uh, Zishan and, and everything. I only got like four new cases from Facebook in January. Good cases. And at like a 2%. Because you're spending 6K. If you were spending yeah. 12K, you would be getting eight cases or nine cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So only like a 2% conversion rate in January. But, um, you know, I did take in... 22 new cases, 18 from referrals, but I know I have to switch that up, make the Facebook the primary and the referrals less so. If it's it, I think I'll get you to not focus so much on Facebook ads at this point because you already have something and you just focus so much and more so on the conversion side. 2% conversion rate, if you get that to 5%, you just, you, but not touching your Facebook ad side, you just doubled your number of clients. So yes. focus in on that. The intaker, recording calls, how you can optimize it. It's crazy how much room there is to be able to grow on the, on the conversion side, more so than the traffic side. Yes. Yeah. We Part of this 700 clients that we signed up um, in our top two law firms, there was one uh, one of our intakers signed up 66 clients by himself. And this is where, um, on average, a couple of months ago, we were each uh, an intaker was signing up about 15 to 20. So three times, just three times the average. And that just came to his quality and how good he is. So it just right. shows like three times better just because of a better person on the calls. Right. So focusing on completely on that. And it's a lot of leverage of a your list of different conversion things to go through. It's actually a good thing that we'll try to do a conversion list, make a note, conversion checklist. I'll make that and I'll share it. And we'll, we'll do a session on it. Great. Thanks. Oh. Um, Randy asks, how did you choose Empirical 360 versus another marketing firm or outfit? Long story short, I get exposed to a lot of these people. And now at this point, I already know the signs, what to look for, uh, particular patterns that I look for uh, at this point. And also I see how long somebody has been in the business. Um, if you see if it, if somebody running Facebook ads uh, and it's your first time seeing them, I would never sign up any service with them. They need to have historical data. They need to have history of doing whatever that they're promising that they're doing. All right, so Facebook ads. So Facebook ads is a, it's a much higher learning curve, much higher. And that's been my top source, my by far my top source of clients for me across multiple practice types. I like to say I kind of mastered it pretty well. I know, you know, how, how, what to do with it. So I'm going to, if anybody, first of all, who is, who is doing, again, who's doing Facebook ads? I want to know how much to address this or not, how deep I should go. I could go really deep or I could keep it high level. Who is currently doing Facebook ads and who, or if you like to do Facebook ads, a lot of things I could share, but I don't want to waste your time if, if there's nobody that doesn't need it getting ready to. So here's a list that I started building, I don't know, five, six years ago, and I've been adding to it. It was daily, you now it's every other day or so. I, I continue to add to it still to this day. Of all the different practice types of law firms that have ran ads, personal injury, state planning, family law and divorce, 
immigration, employment, workers' comp, business, contracts, trademark, criminal defense, bankruptcy, property damage, driving tickets, tax, tax, tax planning, class actions, SSD, abuse, DUI, landlord tenant, real estate, patent, consumer law, medical practice, veterans, et cetera, et cetera. And I put them, everything is chronological order. If it's up top, usually very likely to work. If it's bottom of the list, probably less likely to work. So have that in mind. And then also each one is also kind of put in order of what I analyzed are the best ones and the bottoms on the list are not as good, but I only save the ones that I think are good. So, so if you want to first thing, if you want to know whether it works, go to your practice type and see if there's a whole bunch of people running ads. And what I would do, I would go and open up a new tab for each of these and see how long they've been running ads. And the way to do it, let's just say this one, let's do this one, let's do this. What I would do is I'll filter it by people, that, by ads that are active. And I would scroll all the way down and see how long they've been running that. Well, that's what, this is one of those pretty cool unicorn ads. Since they've been running this ad since June 19, 2021, over almost two and a half years, or actually over two and a half years. This ad is working and it's ad plus the funnel on the back end, blah, blah, blah. So this gives a good idea of like basically what is working, what is not. So this is a good place to start. Is it working? And if so, what is working? So this is the first resource. Again, I'm gonna give you resources, but you might have to delve in yourself. First place to start. And again, please feel free to ask me questions. So that's the first resource. Second is there is a, how can you tell the ad is working? If the ad is active and if the ad is long, is older than like 30 days, then you could assume older 30, 60 days or so then it, that it's, it's profitable. It's very rare for somebody to be doing marketing beyond two months or so that it's not profitable. So it's pretty good indication. Again, how old, how many ads they got going, how long doing it, all that stuff is little signs. And again, I'm not just basing on one law firm. And if I'm looking at a bunch of these law firms and I see, hey, on average, yeah, they're running ads. Okay, there's something here. And of course, it depends on other factors too. The offer, you know, all that stuff, all that stuff other has to check out. So again, if you have offers like below a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks, doesn't matter how good your ads are, it's gonna be kind of like a uphill battle. Have that in mind. The offer has to be good, all that stuff. We're not talking about that. Second resource that I put in the chat is the Facebook ads playbook. This is kind of like a, a recipe checklist, literally written instructions of how to make Facebook ads work. If you're part of Grow Track, this is a, what our, our implementers come in and follow for you. Okay. Everything's laid out in writing, pretty clear what it takes. So that's another resource. I'm not sure if some of you have, if you got access to this or not, but here it is. You know, pretty much everything's here. This is high level is right here. Our goal in this program, all you want to do, again, this is minimal viable to get us off the ground is to create four ads, four ads, usually two images and two video ads and two UGCs. The, those video ads ideally should be UGCs. I've talked about UGCs before, just in case you haven't heard this before. UGCs stands for user generated content. It's basically just a regular person who is following a script that calls out the people and says, Hey, if it, if that's you and you have this problem, there's this thing here, there's this light and then the tunnel. And if you want to get this light and the tunnel, click the link below to see if you qualify or see if you can get this. That's the gist of this UGC video. Okay. How do you, a couple of questions is how do you get this UGC video made? Well, a couple of resources. One is a, a UGC script writer. It's a GPT that I created based on the framework that I, that I use. And I use this myself. It works pretty well. It helps you write the UGC scripts. If you are planning on doing Facebook ads, you need one of these. I'm going to do source. And I've been through a bunch of different platforms to be able to find this. Wasted a bunch of money on different sources is Fiverr. And all it is UGC. Okay. Put in UGC for this particular one. Now, maybe I want some Spanish. I'll put UGC Spanish. Again, please follow me along and just do this yourself. Just go through the motions. You're, it's not as crazy as it seems. But once you search for it on their seller details, ideally, I found out that the quality of these UGC people really, really matters. I went through a phase where I was going for after quantity and I've literally I have over 400 UGCs at this point, four, 400 UGCs. But I've learned is that the better UGC people always just does better. So there's no point of having these lower quality UGCs. So I usually go after these top rated sellers or maybe a level, level two sellers and only look to hire these people and bada bing an assortment of people um, that I could hire. Obviously I'll try to scope them out to make sure that they're good. Let's see how this person is. Usually the things that I look for is authenticity. Number one factor, authenticity, nothing that sounds robotic. Two is good energy. Third is kind of like engaging or like kind of like charming. I would say kind of like somebody that you're like, I don't know, seems like a trustworthy person that I would listen to. 
They're not saying anything. They're not saying anything false. They're not saying that they were a client of your law firm. They're not saying any of that. Okay. They're just talking very general about the problem. If you have this problem, you might be able to get this. If so, do that. So there's no issues there. So let's kind of see how this person is. ¿Cómo deshacerte de los correos inútiles en 10 segundos? Está suscrito a un montón de boletines inútiles. Yep, sounds good. He's actually pretty good. He actually turned to a story. Perfect. I'm not going to overthink it. Click on continue. They have different, usually they have based on length. So this one is 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds. For this one, we'll just do 15 seconds. Let's go for business only, for law, uh, for what type? Lemon law. This, this is really doesn't matter. This is for personal, commercial. Sometimes these uh, you just be able to like, like because it's commercial, it's gonna be an upsell. So whatever, it's fine. And you know this should have a. They usually basically you're gonna write instructions. And so I look forward to working with you. If this goes well, I will hire you for more UGCs. Please make sure to have great energy, be authentic, have good light, and have fast cuts to keep it engaging. Please also add big, clear captions that stand out to the video and say here's the script i think too crazy again just a recap i always want to anybody that i work with and, and i and i just don't say because i'm just saying it no really if they're good i'm gonna hire them more so i say that to make sure that they put a little extra attention to it have good energy be authentic have good lighting keep it fast cuts more or less it's like you know all that stuff and then add clear and captions it's a must it's a must you need to have clear big captions and i just give them the script i'm gonna make this you know I don't necessarily have need to say the problem agitator, all that stuff that might confuse them when they're reading the script. So I'm just gonna clean that up. Bam, bam, bam. I could also if I already have a UGC, I could attach a video or I could link out to the video, whatever. Say here is a good example. Do it like this, whatever. But for this, just for the sake of going through this, blah blah. blah. So Iman asked me, hey, we have created a UGC for Nassim, who I know uh Nassim is the attorney at Iman's law firm. Would you like me to share with you so that you can share share on Zoom? No. Because ideally, I would say it's better to have these people do it. I've I've been through this before, basically recording ourselves versus them. They know how to make it optimized for to do for it to do well on these platforms. So I'd rather if you want to just add one or two of your own videos into the mix, test it out. Sure, you can, but I would say just go. It's better to just go here and just get it ordered versus that. And if you do it yourself, you, again, the good lighting, the fast cuts, the, all that stuff has to really like. Do well if instead if you just go to the source and you just these people know what they're doing um, especially if they're these top rated setters so look to just do it yourself and usually like within a day or two sometimes they message you back for further questions but usually they, you know, they already know what to do especially if you give them clear instructions with the script two days later thing you got yourself as you just see amazing so that is the ad without overthinking it so sure we'll take a look in one since you insist and i'll judge it based on whether i think it's going to convert for ugc so let's see uh, let's take a look. Facing criminal charges are a tough divorce in Ontario. We understand your challenges. From domestic assault to divorce battles, we are here to help. The stress and uncertainty can be overwhelming. At Jalili Law Firm, we're your dedicated legal advocates. Trust us to turn your challenges into solutions. Ready for legal support? Click the button below for a free case review. It's very good. Very good. Especially at the beginning calling other people or the problem. So great. But again, it's not the one I would bank on and just say, this is my only ad. This would be one of the three or four UGCs that I'm going to put up and see which of these does better, either the attorney herself or my UGCs. Sometimes this may be the winner and sometimes it may not be. So, so, but overall the quality is great. The script is good. Overall, pretty good. Okay. So going back to the playbook regarding the images, again, based on the swipe file, you want to know what's working. It doesn't have to be exact copy, but you could take inspiration, put your own twist to it, your own taste to it, try to get two of those images. And then when it comes to the videos, ideally at least two of these UGCs. Usually one of those is going to be the winner. And pretty much that takes care of the, the ads. Let me know if there's any questions so far. And I'm just cutting through a lot of noise. Again, there's so many different types and things like that. This is like literally the fastest way, <laughs> most surest way to make sure you're that you have a good ad. How many ads should we test at a time? Four, Laura. Four is a golden number. Ideally, always testing four at a time. It's not too little. It's not too much. Just enough for Facebook's algorithm to be able to say, this is the better of all, of all these four. One always comes out as the true winner. The rest, it's not something you should try to set up yourself. Again, going through the motions. Ideally, this is part of the growth track. Great. Use our implementation support help to be able to do it. These people like Zishan and stuff have been through it. Micah, he's, he's here, been through this multiple, multiple times. It's laid out here for you. Just basically use the recipe plus somebody who knows what they're doing 
to be able to help you get there. I want to see if there's any other resources. Another resource that I could share with you is something that I haven't shared is my first time sharing it. It's a Facebook ad copywriter. Basically your ad copies. So I just put the link in the chat. It's never been shared. It's basically something that helps you write your ad copies for your, for your ads. And once you get it, by the way, you could add it to your sidebar so it doesn't get lost. Same idea. You click on the button to get started. It's going to ask you some questions to make sure that it's personalized towards your law firm. You had had to figure out what works, what doesn't, build that framework. Also create the framework of what information needs to be collected for it to have the personalized information for you to have good ads. Just And just to show you what it does, I'm just going to take the same answers that I had that I answered in the last GPT. I'm just going to throw it into here and see what ad copies it creates us. And these GBTs, it's not like I just copy and paste it and just use it. No, it just gives me like the draft. So if I know certain things, again, things that I share with you, whatever, obviously you revise it yourself and make it even better. But for the most part, 80, 90% of it's going to get it pretty close. And looking at it, it's, it's amazing. It's great. It calls out the people, it has numbers, it has calling out the problem, telling them what they could receive, it has a clear call to action. These are all great optimized ad copies. This makes Zine's life much easier and Kevin and people that are part of the growth track. It gives us clear headlines that are proven, numbers, you know, the word free, all that stuff, some with exclamations, etc. also gives descriptions. What if I want to make a longer ad? I'm going to say make ad five longer and comprehensive. It's going to have a, you know, if you're not tied to this. Again, it's just kind of, it's a good place. It's definitely a good place to start. Like, this is great, but split the sentences into one line each for easier reading. Right, it's bunched up. I've never read it. I'll be like that. So there we go. Much more optimized. Nice. So that is the ad copy. I'll give you the swipe fall. I give you the UGC writer. I give you the playbook, give you the ad copywriter. There's also ad copy templates, kind of like the, I would say it's probably better if you stick to the GPT. This is basically how this GPT was created was I used my framework. So that's the framework I don't need to share with you. And there's also a training that I did a year and a half ago, but I pretty much summarized and I gave it to you in the past 15 minutes that we've been talking about Facebook ads. That is it. This is it. This is the, the, the recipes for a winning thing. The other part is the lead form, which is where it's basically like the funnel of the Facebook ads. It's a lead form. That's where you ask qualif the qualification questions. That's where you qualify the leads. You ask specific questions to be able to qualify them. Maybe you want to make sure that's connected to your CRM or legal phone CRM. So that all those leads go into your CRM. You want to make sure a text gets sent out to these leads. And the emails get sent out to these leads. And make sure you have an intaker who calls up these leads. And usually the expected conversion rate is 5 to 10%. Right now we're converting 5% of our Facebook leads in order for us to send up 700 clients. But we're still very, very, very profitable sending up 5% of our our leads. But if you're below 5%, that means there's something's off with your intake and your conversion site. And if you're above 5%, you're amazing. You're doing great. You have a really good system. And if you play right, you have the right ads, qualifying them, you have a good intaker, you have an untouchable client source that nobody in your market is doing, and you're going to be, you're going to have the best year of your law firm just by doing this.